This last part will conclude our series on how to create a pillow and I will go through every step in detail um, that we did so far. For that I wrote a summary on creating that pillow and first I will go through the modeling process. Because we already did that I will um, speed up that pro um, part and after that I will set up the material, setting the seams and unwrapping it setting up the light and then adjusting the camera so we can get uh, a good final shot. So in Blender now we take our default cube and then scale it along the Z axis um, go into edit mode add in our 5 loop, loop cuts on this side 5 loop cuts on that side, not 50, just 5 and then again take the corner edges and with proportional editing activated, scale them along the z-axis as well. So now we will add in our force field that will pump up our pillow. Um, actually we want to have it inside the pillow so make sure that the 3D cursor is at the center of the screen and add in the force field. Then we set it to 200 again and then we will add a subdivision surface modifier and add the cloth modifier. So the last thing is to deactivate the gravity, press Alt A and then we have the pumped up pillow. Now I will duplicate that one. Um, this one I will leave at the at the first layer and the other one and this this force field I will move them to the last layer. Then I will convert this pillow, scale it along the z-axis a bit, and now we have the ground shape. Then I will activate smooth and add in another subdivision surface modifier. So now I will rotate the pillow. Uh, if we want to have a look from the front, we will rotate it around the x-axis and then 90 degrees, and then grab it in the z-axis and put it up one unit. Now I will add in the plane, the ground plane, scale that a little bit further and press collision. Now I go into my pillow and activate the soft body. But before we add in our soft body modifier, we actually want to apply the subdivision surface. So there's more geometry that the, sub, uh, that the soft body modifier can work on and I will just lower this value to 1 and apply it. So now I can add in the soft body modifier and um, when going through the settings first of all you have to make sure that the cache step is set to 1 instead of 10. This means that it's it's having a look at the cache every, every frame instead of every 10 frames and um, if you would have 10 frames between it, it there might be some some point where it didn't update correctly and you get errors, so just change this cache step to 1. And the next thing I want to do is deactivate that soft body goal because we only want to concentrate on soft body edges. So everything that has to do with the edges or the simulation is now basically concentrating on the edges of the pillow. Uh, also, I will change the end frame number to 50, so when it reaches 50, it starts at the first frame again and it will then update our simulation or start our sim simulation from, from the beginning. So now you see the pillow is completely collapsing and to prevent that, we want to raise the bending stiffness. And the more stiffer the pillow is, uh, you see now that it's it's looking better, it doesn't collapse right at the moment, it will collapse later on during the simulation, but um, for now we just want to concentrate on the first few frames and we want to pick the best one. So this could be enough, like you can play around with these values, I sent you a, a link to a video where all of these values are explained in detail, but I can just say so far that this pull and push values, the higher they are, um, the less the, the pillow can be pushed or pulled so it also influences the, the overall stiffness of this pillow so if we want to make it completely stiff we would raise these values as high as possible 
um, but I will just for this simulation I will just concentrate on the first frame so I will leave the, these values as they are and um, maybe I will though pump up the friction because this makes the simulation look slower because the air friction is slowing down the whole simulation and um, we have a better control of which frame to pick in the first let's say 10 frames now so I will run the simulation again but before I do that I will also add in another subdivision surface modifier so now you see that uh, the wrinkles just look better than before maybe go even higher and um, yeah I will start the simulation again and then we can pick one frame that that we're happy with maybe that one yeah and after that uh, like in the in the first part I duplicate that pillow and I move it to the last layer so we don't lose the information when we convert that and uh, I will apply the soft body uh, what you can also do is apply as a as a shape key and when you do that there is another shape key added uh, you have the basis shape key this is how the pillow looks in original form and you got the soft body shape key and when you raise this value you see that the pillow now slowly becomes the the shape that we had <coughs> when we applied or when that we that we chose down here during the simulation so now that we have our soft body ready i will go into edit mode and then i will choose the edges that um, I mark as seams and um, I do that because I want to unwrap the pillow in a certain kind of way. So I grab the edge that divides the pillow into two parts and then I go into top view and deselect the edges at the top. The reason I'm doing that is um, we will then have the seam at uh, the bottom of our pillow and we can unfold it. In a, in a nice proper way. So mark seam, <coughs> then um, A, select all, I just have to activate the screen keys again, A to select all the faces and pressing U you can now unwrap the pillow and if you have a look uh, it gives us the information up here that is not uniform scale uh, by the way the information now is is gone away but if you want to watch it again you can drag that one down and it should be somewhere in here. This is um, all the all the steps you do are reported in Blender at this um, console. And here you can read that object has non-uniform scale. And to fix that, we just press Control A and apply the scale. Otherwise, the the texture might be stretched when we apply it later on. So let's try that again. Uh, but before I do that. I will open up the UV editor, the UV image editor, and now I will press unwrap. And now you see, because we applied the scale, uh, now our our UV looks looks much better than before. Okay, so we're done with that part, and uh, the next part will be to add in the material. Actually, there is already a material attached to it. I just add a new one to show this to you, and uh, I'll call that. Hello, fabric. This is originally a diffuse white, and um, I will open up the node editor to make the changes or to apply the textures. So, first, I will add in the image texture, go into uh, textures, image texture, and then you can open in the, in the text um, in the text folder. I placed some different textures that we that we can use that we want to apply to our pillow and um, I would for starters take this one and then attach it to the diffuse shader and now if we press alt Z you can see how the texture is applied you got these different uh, modes down here like the bounding box um, wireframe mode rendered mode and um, <coughs> rendered mode shows us the texture as well but this textured mode is, is much more quicker and you see directly when you change something in the UV how it influences the texture so I will open up the UV image editor and then 
choose our fabric and now if you scale that UV for example you see that it's scaled in re real time in the, in the viewport so you can scale it uh, how far you like it and maybe rotate it depending in, with this texture it doesn't make any difference but um, for other textures it's important that it's, it's the way you want it horizontally or vertically and um, to mix two textures now I just drag in the second texture um, I opened up the I opened up the text folder and I'll just drag that fabric seamless file in and you see the image texture is created from uh, yeah by blender that this node is being created and it usually if there's a UV map it takes the UV map if there's no UV map um, it takes the generate texture coordinates so for now uh, because we have a UV map we don't need that mapping setup that I usually do like this one it's not, it's not that it's not necessary because like there are two ways to control the UVs and this is one way is to control it in here to scale it or rotate it but you can do the same thing with the mapping node and um, but for this uh, for this demonstration I will concentrate on just using the UV editor to to manipulate our texture and how it's being projected onto our object so now we can for example mix these two textures and for that I will take a mix RGB node and if you plug that color into the bottom slot using this factor you can change between those two textures and um, this is one thing we don't see in the texture mode so we will have to switch to rendered and um, now we can see if I change that value uh, to 1 it takes the bottom input like the color 2 value and if we change it to 0 it takes this texture up here and um, as I said uh, during the Skype conversation we had we want to take a texture that controls the factor and to get that texture there are also different methods I will show you uh, a method that only uses Blender so um, I will add in a new image and let's say this is our mask um, you can choose a resolution you like it doesn't have to be that high because we just want to have um, this texture should just control our mm, distribution of the textures of these two textures so now um, I could for example draw in here if I go to the paint mode I can draw on that texture if you press T you get the, the properties panel and let's say we want to draw with full strength white and we want to make certain areas of the pillow uh, the, the blue texture and the other one should be the, the brown texture so if I just want to have the, the side parts now I can draw along the rim of our of our pillow and maybe I'll just do that to show you what I mean um, yeah you would like if it's going uh, over the over the border of our pillow it doesn't really matter because only the area where the UV is matters for us but just for demonstration purposes I will now uh, only save this image this is really important that you save this image otherwise the information is lost and um, it didn't want to save it uh, maybe just go out and then press F3 to save that image I will call that mask and I will save it in the in the textures folder as well so now going back to our note editor we can add in that mask we saved and it's here it's now being updated I'll just drag that in here and if I now take the color of this and put it in the factor it should now place the the blue texture in the area um, where I draw white and the other texture in the area where I draw or where our image is still black now let's say we want the transition between those two textures to be a straight edge that is going directly from uh, the top to the bottom we would do that 
for example, we could go into edit mode and have a look from the front. Then I will B box select all the vertices uh, that are on, on the right hand side, on the right edge. And I will do the same thing with the left side. And then I will go out of edit mode uh, and, and please make sure you're in wireframe mode. Otherwise it won't select the edges at the back or the faces at the back. So now going out of edit mode again and going into the texture paint mode, we now have the option, if you select this little icon down here, we now have the option to draw only on the faces that we selected in the edit mode. So you see we now get a straight edge and that would be uh, important if you want to have a texture that just is on the, on the side. So I will go from, from front view and from back view and now you see that I uh, forgot to or it didn't get this face in here and this face up here wasn't selected as well so we have to select them let's see again yeah now we can draw on them so with this mode activated you only draw on the vertices or on the faces that you selected in edit mode and this way you can get a nice um, clear edge. So going back into object mode, when we change our mask to the one we loaded in, the mask.png, you now see that we draw on, you see that uh, there's a sharp edge and you see which areas are influenced by the texture and which are not. So um, yeah, we see that we lost or we forgot to draw on these parts. Now you see that it's gone up here and also on the other side there are certain areas that aren't white yet so now these are gone and mm, yeah I will leave that for now and go into the UV mode or I just want to put the mouse in here and press F3 again and overwrite the image that we saved before so now if I go back into object mode and shift Z to go into um, rendered mode, you see that we now have this straight edge in here. So if you want there to be a transition, you would use at these, at these edges, you would use um, a gradient that goes from white to black. You can do that in Photoshop and in GIMP. Uh, it is probably more easier because more convenient for you to work with these images in, in Photoshop. And I will quickly show you how to do that. So the first way is to go to image and then edit externally. But for this to work, you first have to set your external editor. And we go to the settings with Control Alt U and then go up here to file. And in file, you can choose the image editor you want to use. I chose GIMP for now. And when I click on image, edit externally it will open GIMP automatically with that image and then I can draw on the image the way I want it and I could make this uh, this uh, gradient for example or I can I can use um, the, the GIMP tools to edit that image. The, th the second option you would have is go into edit mode again and then with, all, with A select all the faces and you see that now you have the option down here uh, with you, that, that's named UVs and you can export the UV layout. Make sure that you have all um, the faces selected otherwise it doesn't export the UVs. So go to UVs, export UV layout and I will go to my text folder and I will call that pillow mask and now export the UV layout. And if we have a look at that folder now you see that this file has been created and now you see the grid of the UV so we can draw using GIMP, for example, we can draw exactly on the parts where we want uh, a certain texture to be. You can even draw the whole, like you don't need a mask now, you can draw the, the, pex the texture you want in GIMP. Then save that one, save that image and um, use that as your texture. So if you don't want to use the, the Blender internal tools, you can, you can always take GIMP or Photoshop to do that. So let's say this is pillow texture with GIMP. 
and um, if we load that in now for example into here I will put it directly in the diffuse channel and shift Z and you see that now the texture is applied but you also see that there's our grid beneath that that will be gone uh, if you if you paint over the over the whole grid like in here you will actually want to make that grid disappear because you want to um, override it or draw something over it the last part will be about the setting up the lightning and for that the lighting sorry and for that I will first of all use a simple sun lamp I will activate the multiple important sampling and then I will click on use notes so it takes an emission note to produce the light I will bump that value up to 4 let's say and then I will adjust the light so it is just coming from the front and facing our pillow so maybe like that then I will find with the, with the help of the viewport I will find the correct angle the correct view I want and then Control alt 0 to place the camera at the position where I uh, have my viewport right now and maybe to set up that scene I will bring in the back wall and um, taking this edge at the back and then extruding it along the z-axis and now I can scale it along x until it is out of our or move it a bit to the left and then scale it furthermore until uh, it is not visible for our camera view you can select the camera with the right click you can either select it if you're inside the camera or from the outside you can select it and then press zero to go into the camera again like always pressing zero toggles between the view and the camera and you can bring that camera further inwards by pressing G and then two times Z so the first Z would be in the horizontal direction uh, sorry vertical direction and uh, the next Z will move it further in or outwards so you can adjust the camera like this or you could even um, open up a new 3d view and have a look at the camera and move it up here and then maybe further downwards and you can control the camera on this viewport and stay in the viewport that you will use for rendering in the main view all right um, there is uh, the focal length this is the, the this is one of the camera settings that defines how um, how open your lens is or um, yeah it is the focal length I think it's called the same way in the in the camera options you can also choose a camera preset for example if you know you want to have a shot that uh, matches a, a certain camera for example we take that um, yeah what is like a Canon for example let's take this Canon C 300 and you know uh, in in real time or in the, in the real image this shot is taken by that camera you can choose that preset it then automatically sets up the focal length and you just need to adjust the image uh, until the pillow is inside uh, the camera view and then you can go and press render and you see that it's rendered um, I just see like the the image that is applied is the one I made in GIMP and this does not look really good so I will change that and um, make the texture the one that I had first Alt Z to check out yeah let's take this one and for that I will set up a bump map and I will add in a color ramp that color ramp will map every value of every color value of our texture to a grayscale value between black and white like 0 and 255 and then I will add in a bump node so vector bump and put that color into the height of the bump then I will grab the diffuse and the material output and put the normal into the normal of the diffuse so now I lower the strength a bit 
and I will have a look how how the bump is working or how how strong the bump is and you can like always um, check that out in, in real time also I what I said before you can shift B and draw a border around a certain area so it takes less render time and you can have a real-time look and, and focus on a certain area especially if you want to look have a look at how the bump is working I don't know if this is um, visible in the video but you should see that it's more crisp and it looks like these seams come out or these, these stripes come out so the next thing is a glossy shader right now this diffuse material will not have any reflection and uh, in general most of the objects do have reflections even if it's just a little bit they reflect and um, I will add in shift A I will add in a shader and make this one the glossy BSDF and then I will connect them using a mix shader so go to shader mix shader and then um, put this glossy value into the shader down here like into the second input of the shader on the mix shader so if we go to shift Z to go to edit uh, go to rendered mode again you can see how this looks so this would be uh, half and half he takes half of the diffuse BSDF and half the glossy so you can lower this value a bit until it is it reaches um, state that you that you like and you also see like in, in a lot of structures you have um, certain areas that they that don't reflect and some that will reflect a lot and if you want to for example have this pattern that is beneath here shining through our glossy like right now this whole area is being gloss or is glossy but we can use a color ramp again to oh sorry don't want to put it there I just want to clear up the scene just quickly so we have a nice overview I will duplicate that color ramp here and then I will put in the color of our texture into that color ramp and if we uh, press Control shift have a look at the color you see now uh, this, this grayscale texture we can move that slider to see where uh, where the white and the black areas are and maybe we choose it like that and then we put in this color into the factor of the mixed shader so now you see that only these areas that are white in our color ramp will reflect and only the dark or the dark areas will will be completely diffuse and you can change um, how much it reflects when you uh, define the white of this color so if you lower this value for example like this it will not be as glossy as um, as before if it as if it is full white you can pretty much think of that this as the same way or as the same method we did choosing which texture to use we take a texture we take um, the color values of a texture to trigger how much or how much of the diffuse and how much of the glossy shader is used and um, yeah you see the effect there are certain other methods that I use use mostly for um, simulating stuff that is in, in real life and um, so far I think uh, we're through with that pillow project if you got any further questions just let me know and uh, I enjoyed working with you I hope this you said it, that it helped you and I'm really glad if it really does so, uh, yeah, I'll look forward for the next project. See you.